So, uh, last hour I said that the Rayleigh distribution is actually a real problem. It really happens. Uh, what we are not happy it is that it's the worst case, actually. It gives us the worst possible results, the highest possible probability of an outage. And I will uh, draw later on, I will draw the details of these distributions to see what is actually going on. <coughs> so what is a better now, a better alternative than this thing here? A better alternative is to remove this house here. This is really causing troubles. If I remove this house here, then my problem turns a little bit different. I have here a directory. And uh, I still have some reflection of the ground. The reflection of the ground may be very strong indeed. So this reflection is not, not weak. So what is my phaser diagram now in this case? In this case, I have here the real and imaginary axis. I have a very strong contribution for a directory. And this very strong contribution, I call it E0. This is the directory E0. And then on top of this, I have many small contributions of different reflections, maybe also refractions from other parts. So I have many small contributions. And the sum of all of them is finally my total electric field ES without a vector sign. I'm not talking about polarization changes in this talk today. So what is now the uh, the corresponding probability density? The probability density before it was the probability density before, just in uh, magnitude, not phase. For the Rayleigh distribution was twice e uh, divided by mean value of the square uh, of, this of the field e to the minus e squared over average value of e squared. So this was the probability density for the Rayleigh distribution. Now this uh, next distribution we have, we have one strong component and many weak components. And this is called the rise distribution. Rise distribution it has a little bit um, more complicated things because here we just needed one data. Uh, here we needed just one data for the Rayleigh distribution. We needed just two sigma squared, which is equal to the average value of the square of the received field. Just one data. Here, in fact, we need two data here. Here we need one, we need what is e zero. And the other thing we need is what is 2 sigma squared. We need two informations, two separate informations, because this one is much larger than the other one. It's going to uh, play a role, a little bit different role in the probability density function. So now the probability density function P of E looks here quite similar to the Rayleigh distribution to E. Oh, uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, not to E, just E, because I'm just going to write sigma. I'm going to describe it with sigma. And 2 and 2 cancel out. That's the reason why I don't need not to write E over sigma squared. Now I have the exponent function to the m minus power uh, E squared plus E0 squared to sigma squared where E0 is the information I have, and 2 sigma squared is uh, also information I have, uh, times here the best cell function E0 of uh, E0 uh, 
E over uh, sigma squared. So uh, this is the formula for the Russian, Russian distribution. Uh, uh, so the rise distribution here is quite similar to the Gaussian distribution. Here we have a lower probability density because of this term here. This acts, adds in the exponent, this is zero, so we get less here, but we get, get more here from the Bessel function we have here. This is zero if you remember mathematics. This is uh, I zero is a function like this, so this is, if this is x, this is I zero of x. This looks like, like such a function, such an exponent function starting with one, value, value one at the argument zero. So just that you know what I0 is. This is an additional function that comes out of uh, performing a similar inte integral. We are not going to do it because this rise distribution, yes, it gives us uh, a better probability distribution. I am going to compare later on the probability distributions uh, on the other side of the desk. Uh, but here I need more complicated measurements. Here is just one parameter just one parameter. Now I need two parameters to be measurement, measured uh, with our measurement. What's the direct ray and what is the average value, the statistics of the smaller contributions to the whole result. Uh, this is the probability density for the region distribution. Uh, we even have a third case, third case possibility, that we do not know anything about uh, about our actual diagram and what is this case? This is usually weather effects. Well, effects with weather uh, do not obey, the, 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 the weather effects usually do not sum different small, many small phasers together. Weather effects are rather uh, a product of, the, of different effects along the uh, uh, path of our uh, radio waves. We know the path of the radio waves, but there may be one cloud here and one cloud there and one cloud uh, having snowflakes over there and another cloud having raindrops over there. So weather effects, uh, it's a product of uh, random functions. With the product of random functions, it makes sense to use the log normal distribution. Where we talk about the electric field expressed in dB. So this is uh, uh, 20 times, of course, electric field. E dB, 20 times logarithm to the base 10 of E times some reference E. So they can, can calculate the logarithm. And the log normal distribution, how does it look like, the log number? I have now the probability density, but of the electric field expressed in logarithmic units in dB. Now this is uh, just like a normal distribution, so 1 over sigma in dB, expressed in dB, square root of 2 pi, as it's usual for normal distribution, e to the minus. Uh, now I have here e dB minus mean value in dB. Oh, sorry. I have to make some space here. Better to remove all these things so that I have some enough space to write the formula. Uh, electric field in dB minus its mean value in dB uh, over 2 sigma in dB squared. Uh, and this is the exponent function. The exponent of this maybe I should just write this thing smaller. There's nothing wrong, just I have to write it smaller. Twice sigma in dB squared. So here I actually, for a log normal distribution, I need two data. I need one. Uh, the standard deviation in dB, and two, I need the mean value of the field in dB. So, uh, 
So this is a, a good uh, a good distribution if my total effect is a product of many minor effects. Like along uh, the path of the radio waves, I know the distribution of clouds. Some clouds may be raining, other clouds may be snowing, some clouds do nothing. And the total effect is the product of the single ones. That's the reason why it makes sense to use logarithmic units and make a, ma use a log normal distribution for this unit. Actually, let's make it clear, this is usually the best case. So, uh, the, drop out, the, 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 the real link is going to drop out more frequently than the log normal distribution, but this is if you want to fool your customer. If you have to sell your customer a certain radio link that, that is supposed to work, okay, you do the measurements in fine weather, no clouds anywhere around. No rain attenuation. And then you get very fine results with the log normal distribution obtained for the data. Log normal distribution is usually not real. It gives far better results than, uh, than, uh, than other distribution. Well, really distribution is usually, usually the worst case. If we're planning everything, anything for the worst case, we have to use the Rayleigh distribution. Further, uh, the log normal distribution requires two, two variables, has two variables. We should compute here, we should, from our measurement, we should extract the uh, mean value of the electric field expressed in decibels and the standard deviation expressed also in decibels. Also, we need two information. Similarly to the uh, rise distribution, uh, but the Rayleigh distribution only has one parameter to be put in. Now, uh, it will be fair to compare many different distributions right now uh, to understand what is going on really here. And drawing now the all three distributions, there are also, also mixed distributions, look if you look at the literature, there are also uh, Combinations of, ray, uh, of log normal and Rishan distribution. Uh, the Rishan distribution also has a factor named k. Uh, this k is equal to e0 squared over 2 sigma squared. Uh, this factor for the uh, Rishan distribution is where around k uh, may range from 0 to any value. So this is uh, actually also holds for a uh, rise distribution where k is equal to zero. We have no direct field component. Sometimes the rise distribution also described with this k. Now let's compare all distributions on single graph. Uh, using also the same units, uh, in order to stay clear, I will draw here uh, standard units for the electric field, not logarithm, and here uh, probability density that uh, I get this electric field. Now, how do these things look like? Let's first draw the uh, Rayleigh distribution. Rayleigh distribution is a function like this. Uh, if I have a certain minimum electric field, uh, the minimum electric field is now the minimum electric field. I can draw it on the picture. Uh, I will use the black color so that so this is our E minimum. And the probability of link outage is now all this red area here. What looks the Rishan distribution, what does it look like? It's a function like this. So the Rishan distribution actually gives us, for a similar parameters, uh, gives us a much smaller uh, probability of link outage. So 
lucruri doar pe asta. What is the log normal distribution? We have to reconvert back decibels back to linear units. We have to use this formula in the opposite way. Well, the log normal actually looks something like this. The log normal distribution may give us no error at all. If I look into this detail more, in, if I write this detail um, on a smaller scale, I can write it here. What actually happens here? If I have here e, I have. P of E, but I am just trying to redraw this small detail here. Here I have, uh, I'm only interested in outages of my link, so uh, E minimum is here. Then my functions, how do they look like? I have uh, the Rayleigh distribution that gives us a line at almost 45 degrees. I here have the line for the rise distribution that is much lower. Though it may have a larger peak afterwards. Right. And I may have a, a final curve, the blue curve for the log normal distribution that's almost equal to zero. And only at the end it gets to some, some value different from zero. So this is log normal. You see that the results for curves that have a similar shape here, especially the log normal and the Rayleigh really, uh, curves have, uh, these mathematics have sim a similar, similar hill here. Only rise is a little bit narrower, more peaked, more pronounced peak has. Uh, though they have a similar shape here, and what does a similar shape mean? It means a similar graph here. It means similar results from the measurements. With similar results from the measurement, I get quite a difference, different result for the probability of outage. This is all outage for the Rayleigh, much smaller outage for rice, and more, almost no outage for log normal probability. So this is a typical example how you can fool your customers. Or the guy that is selling you equipment may fool you because he is using the wrong distribution. Just playing around with mathematics, everything looks fine where we, where we talk about mathematics. But uh, 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 it's important to understand that we actually need a physical explanation for the curve we are fitting our measurement data. If we have no physical explanation, we can get quite different results between these two curves when, when it comes to calculating the outage the probability of outage of our link, radio link. Now, uh, uh, let's be real with this course. We know what the log normal distribution is. It's very easy to compile the data, to put the data in such a formula using logarithms. Even uh, measurement equipment usually gives the result in decibels. So it's fine to put the results exactly here, but it's not real. The real thing is the Rayleigh distribution. That's the real thing. It's also the worst case. We could uh, think of the rise distribution, but usually in our connections, we do not have a direct unobstructed side to the transmitter. So we have no this E0 here. This is not existent, actually. And uh, the, Rayleigh, uh, the rise distribution then turns into a Rayleigh distribution without affecting the the solution how we came it is just more complicated with the real thing is the Rayleigh distribution. Now uh, the Rayleigh distribution only has one problem. Uh, we are usually not talking about uh, electric fields. When it comes to practical calculations with the practical radius, we talk about powers. 
and the receive signal power is actually proportional to the square of the electric field. If this E was a real quantity, need, uh, here I need not uh, write an absolute sign because this was a real quantity. Uh, power is always proportional to the electric field. Uh, but I also have a minor problem here. I have to explain you not to, not to get confused now. I'm using the capital letter P for two completely different things. I'm using the capital letter P for the power. And this is power. P is expressed in watts. And I have the probability of the outage. That may be expressed in percent so, or uh, uh, as a fraction. So this is quite different. Uh, so this is uh, 1 is 100% here. So now please don't mix up these terms. Uh, how to convert this integral now to the powers? We can, I can simply convert this integral, so this integral, so uh, P outage. This is not power, but probability probability from 0 to E minimum. Uh, Rayleigh distribution is 2E over average value of E squared. Uh, exponent, I still need the exponent function. Exponent function of E to the minus uh, E squared over average value of E squared. This is what I get from the measurement. Uh, DE. But now let's convert this thing to the power. And power is e squared, so d power is now uh, twice alpha, our constant, is in between uh, e dE. And uh, power, minimum power, minimum power is now alpha times e minimum squared. If I convert this integral now to these new units and I cancel out alpha everywhere I have it, I can simply this simplify this integral to what? 0 to minimum power given for our receiver. Uh, here this 2e goes into the dE so I have 1 over average power of my signal, uh, exponent function of minus uh, power over average power, and uh, d power, d power, because 2e I got it from here, de I got it from here, and alpha, alpha always cancels out, cancels out here, cancels out here, so alpha is gone. So I can express my probability of the outage just with powers, but be careful, these three are given, these four, one, two, three, uh, are given in watts. This is a probability that just, just a, a quantity without units. So we can now calculate what is the probability of outage of our link. For the Rayleigh distribution, I should now make some space on this, this board. So let's make now a practical example to calculate something. Uh, the sensitivity of a GSM phone may give us a minimum power, uh, minimum, of uh, say minus uh, 110 dBm. This is in logarithmic units. And our network 
gives us an average power of what? Of minus 90 dBm. Now the question is, what is the probability of the outage of this link? Let's try to calculate now the integral we have over there. Oh, sorry, I... Uh, yes, should be... Uh, what we can do with this integral, we can calculate it. So the probability of the outage is now integral from 0 to p minimum, uh, 1 over average p, uh, e to the minus p over average p, dp. Now this integral is one of the simple integrals that can be calculated. This is a constant can go in front of the result. 1 over p average. Then I have to integrate this exponent function. This exponent function gives me minus average power times exactly the same function. So e to the minus p over p squared in the range, range from 0 to minimum power. OK? So now, trying to solve this, these two cancel out. I'm left with the minus sign. I can replace the minus sign by flipping uh, the boundaries of my integral. So the output, uh, uh, the probability of an outage is now what? If I flip the signs, is first is 0 and then is p minimum. So because of this minus, I flip the uh, bounds of this integral. So at p is equal to 0, e to the minus 0 is 1, minus uh, this function on the other end of the interval, uh, e to the minus, e to the minus, uh, the other end is minimum power over average power. And this is now the, our very simple calculation of an outage, probability of outage of a uh, link with a Rayleigh distribution, which for mobile phones, it's very, very real here. Uh, but I should not insert uh, logarithms here, like logarithmic units. I should convert these units first to uh, Real unit. So minus 90 dBm, if I calculate this, this is 10 to the minus 12th power uh, of watts. Because uh, 0 dBm is 1 milliwatt, uh, minus 30 dBm is 1 microwatt, uh, minus uh, uh, 60 dBm is 1 picowatt, minus 90 dBm is one, uh, 1 nanowatt, minus uh, 90 dBm is 1 uh, picowatt. And this is 1 picowatt. Well, the sensitivity of the receiver up here is 10 to the minus 14 watts, converting this to watts, because I should insert watts here in this equation. So my actual probability of outage is now 1 minus exponent function of uh, minus here, uh, 10 to the minus 14 watts divided over uh, 10 to the minus 12 watts. So this is now actually 1 minus e to the minus uh, 0.01. Okay? I could take my calculator and now try to calculate these things. Uh, f usually uh, the minimum power is much smaller than the average power. So I could uh, make here, uh, uh, so if I have uh, e to x, uh, the development in the Taylor series is 1 plus x plus uh, x squared 
two uh, factorial plus uh, uh, x cubed uh, six uh, three factorial and so on. So for small arguments, it's just the first term. Much, much smaller than 1. So for small arguments, I could simplify here my formula that the probability of outage is simply uh, 1 minus 1 minus that exponent. We have 1 minus uh, p minimum divided by average power received. Uh, so this is for small arguments. This is approximately uh, p minimum uh, over average p. Average power. Average power. And this is true when this thing is much smaller than 1. Then it is true. The simplification is true. What could we do with here? Here we can simply say that this thing is about 0.01 is 1%. So we have 1% outage of this link here. This is usually a good, uh, a good connection to a mobile phone. 1% outage is a very small outage because you are also moving all of the time. You lose some packets, but mainly you are going to be able to talk to your correspondent. So this is how to actually use uh, our Rayleigh distribution. We looked at the sensitivity of the phone. We looked at what the network is providing us. Uh, we should convert all quantities into watts because we have to plug uh, watts in our equation. And uh, further, uh, using the approximation for small arguments, it's very easy to, to calculate this exponent function. This is very easy to be done. OK. Uh, so now what can we do to improve the speakers? We cannot increase the network power very much. OK, we can install more powerful transmitters on our base stations. Or install taller masts. We also gain a lot installing taller masts. But uh, the competitive company can do the same. They also can install more powerful transmitters. So I'm going to raise up also my interference. And the interference to noise ratio is going to, uh, the interference to noise ratio is going to be the same. So what I can actually do is to improve uh, not the sensitivity of my receiver, but to use more than one receiver. So uh, raise this part of the board here. What can I do to improve my situation without raising the power now much? I can use two receivers with two antennas. So I can think of diversity. Reception. What uh, do I do in this case? I have a transmitter connected to its antenna. I only have one transmitter. But on the receiving side, if this is the radio link, here, I am using two antennas at a particular spacing. Uh, I have two receivers. I have two receivers. And uh, uh, one possibility is just to select the best receptor. This is, uh, I could also call it this as a spatial diversity. It 
It is not used in your mobile phone because it was too small, but it is used on the base station. I have here at a certain distance d uh, at the range r. I have two receiving antennas. If the distance between the two antennas is considerable, I could obtain perhaps a situation when the these two antennas are not correlated, so fading is not the same on this antenna as on this antenna. As in this case here, if I just move this antenna on another location, I have different lengths to the receiver and different distances, and I have a different kind of interference, and of course, uncorrelated uh, reception. Uh, how is this done in practice? Practically, you may have seen towers for mobile phones that have a structure of antennas like this. Uh, this is perhaps more frequent in Italy than it is in Slovenia. You can see three antennas in the tower. They look identical, oriented in the same direction. What are these three antennas on the tower? The central antenna is the transmitter antenna. There's nothing I can do with the transmitter. But here I have first receiver and I have second receiver. I am using two receivers and with two receivers I can select the best signal because the transmitter here I can afford power. Here I can make have plenty of power for my transmitters at the base station. But I don't have much power at the mobile unit. So I can gain a lot installing two antennas spaced as much as I can. The more they are spaced the better the situation. And in this way, I can gain several precious dB in our link. So this is uh, spatial diversity is uh, typical for mobile phones, for the base station. For the base station, not for the unit, but for the base station is typically uh, many antennas are used on the, on the same tower. Having uh, all antennas oriented in the same direction, but spaced. Now this is D is now the distance between the two receiving antennas. So on the receiving side of the link, I may have here a much better reception on one, at least one of the two receivers. Uh, this was spatial diversity. Of course, I have other possibilities to make diversity. I may have two antennas at the same location, but oriented in a different direction. One in this direction and the other one in this direction. And here I have receiver one, uh, receiver two. And again, I select the best in my receiver. Uh, here I have the patterns that are oriented in different ways. This pattern is oriented here. This pattern is oriented here. So again, since uh, if, it, if it was a, sing, a simple link from the transmitter to the receiver, it wouldn't matter really. But because I can expect reflections here or here, these uh, antennas in different directions may give me different uncorrelated reception. So in the case of a multipath environment, this thing also helps, though it is not as efficient as spatial diversity. This is direction diversity. Uh, what I could further do, uh, so solution one, solution two, solution one is frequently used in mobile networks. Uh, solution three, I have uh, one transmitter with one antenna, but here I have two antennas that have different polarization. Say vertical polarization versus horizontal polarization. two receivers with two different antennas. And here what I get here is I can also select the best for polarization diversity. Uh, 
I don't know what the polarization of my transmitter is because I don't know how my us user is going to handle his receiver. You know that uh, users usually hang on the receiver at uh, 45 degrees. That's the reason why this is not usual to have vertical and horizontal, but having plus 45 degrees for one kind of users and minus 45 degrees for the other group of users. Some users handle their phone in this way and the other are turned the other way around so they have the antenna just at 90 degrees of their phone. So this is a very useful combination and in fact most mobile phone antennas if you a base station mobile phone antennas, if you remember uh, when we were, uh, we were talking about arrays, antenna arrays, we had the large array, the broadside array for a mobile phone base station. That array, it was a box like this one we had here, in, in, uh, had the, the antennas dual polarized at 45 degrees, one and the other direction. The dipoles uh, were at 40, 45 degrees and this is typically done in base stations, though we don't see that. We don't see that in a single box we may have dipoles in this direction, but in the same box I may have the other groups of dipoles in uh, the other direction at 45 degrees. We don't see that for, from the outside because that's, that's a protective case around this thing. Uh, I have other solutions here. Uh, like solution four, I have two transmitters. Add two different frequencies, frequency one and here frequency two. Connect it maybe to the same antenna. And having on the other end of the link, having just one single antenna, but connected to two receivers. And again, I select the best one. So this is now frequency diversity. If uh, the reception, the link does not work on one frequency, let's try another frequency because the interference changes with the carrier frequency. And where is this actually used? Actually it's used in GSM, in frequency hopping. GSM phones, if they can do it, if the base station is not limited by, for frequency hopping, GSM phones will transmit any packet in, of information on another frequency. Well, some packets are going to be lost because they just hit the zero of a package, but the other packets will get through. So with the, some error correction, forward error correction algorithms, the GSM phone is going to be used, working much better using frequency hopping. So not, not just using just two frequencies, using as many frequencies as they can. Not all of them get through the system, but many of them get through and we have a link. And we correct the other ones using error correcting codes here. So finally, we have, uh, talking about diversity, we have uh, t time diversity, so I have a single transmitter, but I connect it to the antenna and I connect it through a delay line, say tau, a delay tau, to the same antenna. So I transmit the same message twice. On the receiving side, I have just one antenna, I have just one receiver, but here I have my direct signal and my delayed signal. And now since uh, the fading is a function of time, if I didn't receive it the first time, I will receive the same second time. So this is time diversity. Okay, any of these solutions of doing diversity cost money. Here I need two antennas. Okay, I can have them on the base station. I need two antennas in different directions. This is not that popular with mobile phones, but it's very important in other uh, applications. 
I have polarization diversity. This is standard for mobile phone base stations. All base stations for mobile phones have it. Uh, I have frequency diversion. GSM has built-in frequency hopping. I can repeat also my message if it was not received the first time. It's a, if it's a very important message, it makes sense. Uh, not so popular probably in mobile phone because users are not moving fast enough to make any use of the <coughs> uh, of this uh, uh, time diversity. So, but uh, many of these solutions are used. Uh, next week, for the last lecture, we are also going to make, trying to make even better use than diversity. But diversity was the first solution actually applied to mobile phones. <coughs>